Hello, welcome to unit eight, motivation, emotion, and stress. These slides um, accompany Meyer Psychology for the AP course, third edition. Um, today, we're going to be going over affiliation, module 40, affiliation and achievement. Oops. There are three learning targets for this module. Describe the evidence that points to our human affiliation need, our need to belong. Um, no, mod, the, sorry, the second one, discuss how social networking influences us, us, as I was checking Twitter right before I hit record, and discuss achievement motivation. Okay, what is an affiliation need? The need to bring relationships, not, not the need to bring, the need to build relationships and to feel part of a group the need to belong. That is an affiliation need. What evidence supports affiliation as a survival tool? Well, social bonds boosted our early ancestors' chances of survival. Thinking about things through an evolutionary perspective. Adults who formed attachments were more likely to survive, to reproduce, and to co-nurture their offspring to maturity. So remember from the evolutionary perspective, it's all about um, passing your genes down to the next generation. Attachment bonds motivated caregivers to keep children close, calming them and protecting them from threats. And if you remember from the importance of attachment that we discussed in some of the earlier modules in the developmental psychology, um, although they're technically after these, but <laughs> we also discussed these within the developmental psychology modules. Okay, can belonging boost health? Having a social identity, feeling part of a group, boosts people's health and well-being, according to this research. What does the research show? Well, having someone who rejoices with us over good news helps us feel better about both the news and the friendship. You may have experienced this. When you rejoice with someone else over some sort of really good news, it can help you actually feel better. A stranger's thank, casual thank you can warm our heart. This is so powerful. Just small little things can have such a huge effect. Us just simply someone saying thank you can make us feel more positively. Close friends can literally make us feel warm as if, as if we were holding a soothing bowl of warm soup. So researchers asked the same question of American and South Korean university students, then asked them to rate how much that satisfying moment had satisfied their various needs. In both countries, the peak moment had satisfied self-esteem and relatedness belonging needs. How can we create us? Thrown together in groups at schools, at band camp, or in sports teams, we form bonds. Parting, we feel distressed. We promise to call to write to return for reunions. By drawing a surf sharp circle around us, the need to belong feeds both deep, deep attachments and to deep attachments to the in-group people, but also hostilities towards those outside. You know, we can think about fanatic nationalism, ethnic rivalries, gangs, <laughs> to some extent, even fanatic um, sports affiliation. We tend to, as humans, be fairly tribal, okay? And that can be problematic as well. The need to connect. Six days a week, women from Philippine, the Philippines work as domestic helpers in thousands of Hong Kong households. On Sundays, they throng to the central business district, picnic, dance, sing, talk, and laugh. So what does the research on social isol on isolation show? Social isolation can put us at risk for mental decline and ill health. Older adults make more doctor visits if lonely and are at greater risk for dementia. Bereaved, we may feel life is empty or pointless, pointless, and we may overeat to, un, to fill that emptiness. So ostracism, which is deliberate social exclusion of individuals or groups, was demonstrated when white cadets at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point ostracized Henry Flipper for years, hoping he would drop out. He persevered in spite of their cruelty, and in 1877 became the first African-American West Point graduate. Also consider this study. After giving subjects a personality test, researchers told some students that they were the type likely to end up alone later in life, or that people they had met didn't want them in a group that was forming. They told other students that they would have rewarding relationships throughout life, or that everyone chose you as someone they'd like to work with. 
What were the results? Well, those who were excluded became much more likely to engage in self-defeating behaviors and to act in disparaging or aggressive ways against those who had excluded them, okay? Blasting them with noise, for example. Okay, shifting gears a little bit. One research team phone app counted college students checking their cell phone 56 times a day. Honestly, that's not really that hard for me to believe anymore. Okay, <laughs> how have we changed how we connect? Among 2014's entering American college students, 94% were using social networking sites. The typical US teen with a cell phone sends 30 texts a day. This is research from 2015, it may be more or less, probably more. Worldwide in 2015, 68% of adults use the internet. And I would assume that is higher now in 2020. Okay, how does social networking influence us? By connecting like-minded people, the internet serves as a social amplifier. It's a good term to think about. In times of social crisis or personal stress, it provides information and supportive connections. It enables people to share their experiences and compare their lives with others, which can be nice or really bad, though it can be depressing when one garners few likes or has lots of bragging friends. There's some research showing how that can have a really strong effect on certain people and how they feel about themselves. How has being online changed us? Well, nature has designed us for face-to-face -face relationships, and those who spend hours online are less likely to know and draw help from real-world neighbors. When communicating electronically rather than face-to-face, -face, we are often less focused on other people's reactions. We're less self-conscious and then less inhibited. Um, sometimes this can be taken to an extreme with bullying, um, when bullies hound a victim, hate groups post messages promoting bigotry or crimes, or teens send photos of themselves they might later regret. More often, however, the increased self-disclosure serves to deep, deepen relationships. So there are good and bad things. Narcissism is a personality trait in which people feel self-important, self-focused, and self-promoting. Narcissism is sort of self-esteem gone wild. Personality tests may assess narcissism with items such as, I like to be the center of attention. Things like that are questions that will get to um, narcissism. How does social media support narcissism? People with high narcissism test scores are especially active on social networking sites. They collect more superficial friends. They offer more staged glamorous photos. They retaliate more against negative comments and not surprisingly, they seem more narcissistic when strangers are asked about them. In one study, college students were randomly assigned either to edit and explain their online profiles for 15 minutes or to use that time to study and explain a Google Maps uh, route. After completing their tasks, all were tested. Who then scored higher on a narcissism measure? Those who had spent the time focused on themselves. This is research from 2010 from Freeman and Twenge. Uh, Gene Twenge does a lot of very interesting research in this area. What are some of the negative outcomes of social media use? In both Taiwan, Taiwan and the US, excessive online socializing and gaming have correlated with lower grades um, or increased anxiety and depression. 40%, 47% of the heaviest users of the internet and other media had mostly C grades or lower compared to 23% of the lightest users. Young adults who used seven or more social media platforms, seven or more social media platforms were three times more likely to be depressed or anxious than those who used two or fewer. AP exam tip, if you're taking the AP exam or even if you're not. Free response questions on the AP exam often ask students to apply psychological principles to real life situation situations. It's easy to imagine a question that deals with social media. You might be able to have a lot of experience in this area. What is achievement motivation? A desire for significant accomplishment, for mastery of skills or ideas, for control, and for attaining a high standard. Researchers followed the lives of 1,528 California children whose intelligence test scores were in the top 1%. 40 years later, when researchers compared those who were most and least successful professionally, they found a motivational difference. Those most successful were more ambitious, energetic, and persistent. As children, they had more active hobbies. As adults, they participated in more groups and sports. Groups and sports. Um, that's research from 1980 by Goldman. Having spent his life on the Scottish island of Rosse, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, farming a small patch of land, tending its lighthouse, and fishing, Malcolm Mockloyd 
felt anguished. His local government repeatedly refused to build a road that would enable vehicles to reach his north end of the island. With the once flourishing population there having dwindled to two, McAloyd and his wife, he responded with heroic determination. By hand, Malcolm began to transform the existing footpath on his land into a 1.7 mile road to town. It took him 10 years. This is the road that Grit built. Okay, so he it spent 10 years creating a road to get to town. That is grit. <laughs> Passion and perseverance in the pursuit of long-term goals. When combined with self-control, gritty goal striving can produce great achievements. This is a lot of research by Angela Duckworth. Um, in some studies of both secondary school and university students, self-discipline, which is grit, has surpassed intelligence test scores in predicting school performance, attendance, and graduation with honors. What are some research-based strategi strategies for realizing our goals? Make the resolution, announce the goal to others, which is sometimes hard for some of us to do, develop an implementation plan, create short-term rewards, monitor and record progress, create a supportive environment, and transform hard-to-do behaviors into must-do habits. So make them from like, hard to do things into things that are habits that you just must do. Okay, we are to the learning target reviews. Our need to affiliate or belong had survival value for our ancestors, which may explain why humans in every society tend to live in groups. Social bonds help us to be healthier and happier. Feeling loved activates brain regions associated with reward and safety systems. Ostracism is the, it's kind of a hard word for me to say right now, is the deliberate exclusion of individuals or groups. People often respond to ostracism with initial efforts to restore their acceptance, with depressed moods, and finally with withdrawal. Social isolation can put us at risk mentally and physically. People suffer when socially excluded, and they may engage in self-defeating or antisocial behaviors. We connect with others through social networking, strengthening our relationships with those we already know. When networking, people tend toward increased self-disclosure. People with high narcissism are especially active on social networking sites. Working out strategies for self-control and disciplined use can help people maintain a healthy balance between their real world and online time. So achievement motivation is a desire for significant accomplishment, for mastery of skills or ideas, for control, and for attaining a high standard. High achievement motivation leads to greater success, especially when combined with determination, determined, persistent grit. And grit is definitely um, something, uh, sort of a word that is used a lot, and people trying to uh, facilitate the growth of grit within individuals. And if you're interested in this area, like I said before, Angela Duckworth does a lot of research in the area of grit. So thank you so much for listening. Take care.